for you for checking. Now remember, you're lucky you can get 1% on a savings account or on a CD uh, short term. They offer you three and a quarter percent on your checking account. Yeah, can you beat that? So call Cattaraugus County Bank in Dunkirk if you want to explore that. They have a couple of minor restrictions, but they're, this, they're no big deal. If you, uh, <laughs> you've got to go online. Who doesn't? And uh, you have to make 10 purchases on their debit card, which you can walk in and out of the family dollar and make, buy, a bu uh, buy a bubble gum, <laughs> a pack of gum or something, 10 times the same day, no problem, as long as they don't throw you out. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think there was one other minor thing. Uh, you have to... You have to have one regular transaction. Either send them some money or, or make a bill pay or something every uh, every month. All right, you got to have a little activity. That's all. Three and a quarter percent. Yeah, can't beat it. Checking, checking. Huh? Cattaraugus County Bank. Cattaraugus County has moved into Chautauqua County. Not said. Talking my head off here. Too many other things going on. Um, they're telling me the time is on for the news. Okay, real news. We got some great news. You know, we have such wonderful clubs here in Chautauqua County. And uh, I just wanted to mention the Silver Creek crowd. They have, actually they have two clubs over there, but the, the big one's uh, the Lakeshore Senior Citizens. And they have a senior center down in the, where in, in, uh, Route 5 connects to Route 20. And it's a beautiful center. Go down there someday if you're over in the area. You don't necessarily have to belong to the community where you have the uh, club, usually. Uh, Silver Creek is a great club. And Irene Christopher is doing the job over there. And she's renowned, I'm telling you. She gets everywhere. She, she has been so busy. And uh, I did want to mention that uh, there, there's going to be no meeting uh, coming up. And the next meeting will be December 2nd over there. So get over there, and you'll meet Pat Pecos and Loretta Smith, who serve the coffee and refreshments, most important part of the seniors. Happy birthday to Mary Dvorak. And new officers. You know, everybody's running their elections for the new officers. And we have uh, such, such folks, beautiful people there over there. President Charlene Hallmark, Vice President Irene Christopher again. Secretary Dorothy Cooper. Chaplain Josie Wierzlinski. And Sunshine Club is Agnes Warner. How about that? These are the people who work all, very, all, yeah, they work all year for nothing. But they do it because they love their senior center, and the senior centers are really, if you don't belong to one, join one, because it's like, you know, the, it's the most wonderful thing. You have a second home. You have a whole group of people um, who are supporting you. You have a huge support group, new family. <clears throat> join your local senior center. Try it out. You'll love it. And if you know a senior who hasn't uh, got the gumption, grab him by the elbow someday, drag him over, and let him sit through a meeting and meet everybody. They'll be back forever. All right, quick note here from the Mar Mount Carmel Social Club. Very active group also in Silver Creek. Silver Creek, incidentally, is live now. You can hear me live. You can call in. If you're in Silver Creek, you want to put your name on the uh, fame on the stars, call in right now. The number is right in front of you, 7535-225. Can't remember all those numbers. 753-JACK, like jack your phone in. Cracker Jacks. <laughs> Mount Carmel, uh, they installed their new officers. Carm Tampio is president. Uh, vice is Dorothy Minier, second vice. They have two just in case. <laughs> Gloria Morello, Secretary Thelma Wilkin, uh, Wilker, and Treasurer's Mary Sack. All right. Next meeting over there is December 2nd. Don't miss that. They're having an annual Christmas party December 16th. Most clubs, all the clubs, I'll say, I'll wager a bet, all the clubs have a Christmas party, and uh, it's a part, big gala occasion. It's a wonderful time. Dinner and presents and uh, just lots of fun. Dancing and, of course, fooling around. <laughs> uh, Lester and Joe Ark held the 50-50, and Joe and Teresa Ark called bingo. <laughs> Everybody plays bingo at the end of the senior meeting. You know that, don't you? Bingo is kind of the national uh, senior game. <laughs> Enough of that. They're telling me the news is over. Reed, you've had it. I got one more. No? No? Okay. I'm going to take a break. I've got a public service announcement for you. And we'll be on with Fort <coughs> Flexer, the geezer who shoots from the hip. This is for you. Cable access channels are critical tools for local government. 
They provide important information about issues, services and programs, as well as local emergencies. They also allow you to watch your local elected officials in action. Through the provision of governmental access channels, our communities are kept informed, educated and entertained. Where else can you get information about your local government? Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local government access channel. And I, uh, I'll tell you, life goes on, guys. What a wonderful thing. Here he is again, the geezer, Mark Flexer. Good morning, Reed. Good morning, Marty. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Or maybe I should say friends, neighbors, relatives. And countrymen. And, well, of course, countrymen, Reed. But uh, <laughs> I, that's something I feel very strongly, and, and it irks me. It uh, seems to bother Reed somehow. But uh, I feel that we all have obligations to each other. And I've spoken about this before, uh, this argument about the health care plan that Congress is working on. And uh, there seems to be the feeling that health care for the 39 million people, citizens, friends, neighbors, who do not have health care is just their tough luck. Gee, we can't afford that. How, how can we give you health care? Uh, we can send you over to uh, the Middle East if you'd like to put on a uniform, then we'll give you health care. But uh, our early doc the documents that were written early on in the formation of our government remind us, in Mr. Jefferson's word, that we are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if you do not have all of them, if you do not have the first two, life and liberty, how in the world can you pursue happiness? If you've lost your legs in an accident and you can't get around other than in a wheelchair, you should not have lost your, your right to all of the privileges of being an American citizen. Uh, this, this argument in Congress that we can't afford to take care of 39 million Americans is just infuriating to me. I can't help it, I'm sorry, but if you're my neighbor and my friend, I want you to have health care. Reed, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Well said. Um, it's in Congress now, and of course I, I suspect that the, uh, once they get to voting, the, uh, the health care industry, which is 15 uh, hundred different companies will uh, s will probably torpedo it with all the billions they're spending on it. You know that Buckus, who heads the committee for getting this out, was paid over a million dollars in health care benefits uh, money this year. <laughs> Suddenly, ah, uh -huh. and a lot of other congressmen and senators getting a lot of money. Oh, the money, and it show doesn't even show up a lot of it on the uh, spectrum. Okay, now. Um, We'll have to see what happens. And I'm talking about real meaningful change, such as, the, as Mord mentioned, the, the public option, which they've denigrated terribly. It means that you would have, the, the government would provide you health care as a final resort, which they're doing right now. It's called Medicaid, and every state has it, although they've been restricting it more and more, making it more and more difficult. You know, they don't pay enough to the doctors or the uh, dentists and specialists who are working under it. They don't give them diddly in the hospitals. The ambulances, they give them peanuts. You know, I have a, a friend who's a dentist who said, I don't even file. The $10 they give me for a, uh, an office visit, which is around about $50, $60 minimum, usually it's 280 they give me $10. <laughs> I don't even bother filing, because when I do, my secretary spends hours filling out the form. They send it back because she missed a comma. <laughs> I do take a few customers, he says, who are on Medicaid, and I just, I'd write them off. They're just my my uh, pro, pro bono customers, people I do for the good of them and the world. All right, that's the way it's working out, friends. Uh, so we've got to stop the uh, disconnect, uncoupling of Medicaid and Medicare from the actual costs, because otherwise nobody's going to take care of you. Doesn't matter. There's a big industry down in New York, uh, in the New York area down there, they have little signs, we do not take Medicaid. <laughs> and they'll, be, they'll add uh, Medicare shortly, at the way things are going. Although by law they have to take Medicare, most of them. Lots of things going on. 
I'm going to take a little break. We're going to